naturally, he wasn't at the office. Where was he? In the country, at his new house, in bed. Mrs. Blanding, Mrs. Blanding. Lord, Mr. Blanding's is asleep. Oh, okay, Mrs. Blanding. Uh, don't you want your... Uh, no. Oh. <coughs> what is it? What is it? Oh, wait, what time is it? Go back to sleep, dear. Oh, no, no, I won't. I promised to take you and the children to church. Get my coffee. It's please. Wednesday. I'll drink it anyway. Oh, no, of course. Of course. Your office is closed. Mrs. Goddard's funeral is today. Why, bless her soul. Ah, me, a whole day to myself. Mm. Do you realize that, Muriel? I can spend the whole day in bed if I want to. Just think of it. I can stay home, count my socks. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you. Why not? Most of them are for the left foot. I don't know why. You probably lean right. Mm. Muriel. Muriel, what are you doing? Telling Maud about breakfast. In a tin can? You know about this. She has a tin can, too. They're both attached to this piece of string. I talk into this end. You know about this, Jim. I do know. What happened to the buzzer? What buzzer? Our buzzer. Our bedroom to the kitchen buzzer. But, Jim, we don't have... Oh, now, Muriel, you know very well we have buzzers. We have them all over the house. But, Jim, Mr. Switch was called away. Mr. Switch? Call right back to Red Hook, New York. You remember, he started there and his uncle called him back. Hmm. Now, Muriel, close the window. Step back into your slippers. Come over here. Comb your hair on the way. Now, Muriel, who is Mr. Switch? You never listen, that's all. I tell you funny items and you never listen. You, well, come now, Muriel. Sit down. Tell me. I'm listening now. No fun telling twice. You even laughed. He became an electrician because of his name, that's why. He became an electrician because his name was Switch. Yes, and that's funny. Mm -hmm. That's why he became what he became. It's like a man called Milk becoming, oh, I don't know. Becoming a cow. <laughs> well, of course, that would happen rarely, I grant you, but still. So. Well, that's why the buzzers aren't connected. They're all here. Uh -huh. May I go back to calling Maud now? Oh, sure. I signaled, and she's just sitting there at the kitchen window holding a candy area. I hope she filed down the edges. Well, that's silly. She folded over the label, so did I. Really? Now, don't order anything as complicated as an omelet. I doubt if they could climb the string. <laughs> just, just coffee. Mrs. Blanding? Mrs. Blanding, may I come in? Come in, Maud. Oh, good morning, Mr. Blanding. Good morning, Maud. May I have some coffee, please? Yes, sir. And Mrs. Blanding, the headmistress is on the phone from the school. Mrs. Bundle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does she use the telephone, or does she, too, speak into a tin can? <laughs> oh, did Mrs. Blanding tell you about our interoffice system? Oh, yes. Listen, Mr. Blanding, it works. I can hear every word Mrs. Blanding says when the icebox is off, just as clear. It was her idea, and I tell Maud, you... what does Mrs. Bundle want? But to talk to you, Mrs. Blanding. Uh-huh. Susan's probably been fighting again. I should never have taught her how to punch. Oh, well, I'll talk to Mrs. Bundle. No, you stay in bed. It's your day off. I'll go downstairs and talk to her. Maud, bring Mr. Blanding to his breakfast in bed. Yes, Mrs. Blanding. In bed, yeah. Bring me the morning paper, Maud. Yes, sir. Ah, me isn't life good. Not when you spend it talking to Mrs. Spundle. I'll be right back, Jim. Good morning, Mrs. Spundle. I'm afraid I have bad news, Mrs. Blanding. Your daughter is here for the measles or athlete's foot. What do you mean, are the measles or athlete's foot? Just that, Mrs. Blanding. The girls will have to be isolated. But, Mrs. Spundle, they're both different. Personalities have nothing to do with it, Mrs. Blanding. They are concerned with health and the welfare of the other children in their class. I don't mean Joan and Susan. I mean... Mrs. Tommy Pickett as well. No, Mrs. Spundle. No, Mrs. Spundle. How can you not know the difference between athlete's foot and the measles? That's what I mean. I said that it might be enough to decision rest for Dr. Trevor. However, he is not here, and we must abide by the opinion of our nurse. Oh, Give the tray to me, Maud. I'll take it up. All right, I'll go get yours. Jim. Ah, breakfast? Oh, good, I'm hungry. Oh, what a day, what a life. Did you bring the paper? Mrs. Spundle says they are to have the measles or athlete's foot. What? That's what she said, either one, either one. Joan or Susan? Both, either one. I see. They're coming home as soon as we get an opinion. Well, I'll give you one right now. Tell them to stay where they are. This is my day. 
It doesn't make sense. It certainly doesn't. Measles are serious sometimes. Oh, um, who the devil put the cherry in my grapefruit? Muriel, you know how I feel about cherries. How could they get athlete's foot if they don't take showers at school? I don't understand it at all. Where's the wastebasket? Ma took it down to empty it. But how? Oh, that's what I want to know. Could you confuse the two? What's wrong with Miss Olive? Is she crazy? Do you mind if I put this cherry in your tin can telephone? <laughs> I really don't care what you do with it. Now, help me figure this out. Oh, well, I might as well. My day is ruined anyway. <laughs> it might just as well be Sunday. That doesn't mean that I don't love the children. It just means they remind me of Sunday. Jim, please don't leave me alone in this family crisis. All right. Now, let's look at this sensibly. Now, when they come home, if they have spots on their faces, they have the measles. If they itch, they might have measles or athlete's feet. <laughs> now, if they have spots on their feet, that means... Well, that means they have athlete's measles. <laughs> Really? Is there such a thing? Well, of course. Well, no. You isolate the athlete's feet and send the girls back to school. Without their feet? Naturally. Now, oh. run downstairs. <laughs> now, go on, Julia. Run downstairs like a good girl and get the sure. paper. Oh, be quiet. And be sure to let me hear the next installment after lunch. And whatever, whatever, mind you, you and Mrs. Spundle and Miss Olive decide is wrong, we'll be sure to ruin the rest of the day for all of us. My goodness, I should have gone to Mrs. Guider's funeral. Well, I do think so. Get the paper, You are being mean, your own daughter. Yo, yo. Yes, Jim. Now, listen to me. I've had the measles 12 times, and I've read all about athlete's feet. Joan probably sat too near the radiator. You know how hot in the face she gets. I hardly think that Susan and Tommy Pickett in different rooms could have done the same thing. Yo, yo, get the paper, will you please? Oh, what's that? The signal. What signal? The tin cans. Oh, yeah. Now, tell me, not that I'm terribly interested, did you ring a bell at the signal more? Because if you did, I didn't hear it. No, I knocked on the window with a small rock, very gently. Well, why doesn't Maud do the same thing? That bell is quite disturbing. You can't knock upwards. You don't say. I've got to answer. The rock only hangs on one end of the string. The down end, it won't hang up. That's obvious. What? What? I can't hear you. You're swinging the string again, Maud. All right. Yes. Me All right, Maud. Thank you. Signing off. Roger. Roger, dear. Will you pretend that I'm not here for a while? Yes. The children are on their way home. Goodbye. All right, I'll leave you alone. But I'm putting the girls to bed as soon as they arrive, and as long as you've had measles so many times, you won't mind a bit telling them bedtime stories to put them to sleep. What, right after breakfast? No, dear, later, well, uh, later. Oh, couldn't we just pretend that I'm hard at work in the office? All right, I'll try, but it's awfully hard with you there in bed. Bye, Roger. <laughs> Goodbye, Jim. Oh, and don't tell the children the story that you told to Bill. And the gun jammed. Why? Oh, don't ask me. Well, what was I going to do? Unjam it. I couldn't. I was paralyzed with fear. I could feel the moose's breath. How did it feel? I couldn't breathe. Oh, that was good. Why? Wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. Suddenly, I felt a blow on my head. What was it? I was pushed right into the ground, and the moose thundered over me. Wow. What was it? Well, a moose, I told you. No, the blow. Oh, oh, that. Oh, yeah. Well, my guide. Jack Eagle's foot. He pushed me into a ditch and saved my life. Was he an Indian? Yep. Yeah. With long black hair and a horse? No, strangely enough, he had red hair. He did? Did he scalp you? What did you say, Joan? Did he scalp you? Yes, Joan, he did. I was bored for years afterwards. <laughs> oh. Well, that's enough for tonight. Now, you two dear children go to sleep. We're not sleeping. Well, you ought to be. But it's not late. Well, you've got measles. I've got to sleep. Where are you going? Downstairs to have dinner with your mother. Tell her to come up and say goodnight. I will. Good night, Trish. Good night, John. Good night, Daddy. But I don't think we have the measles. You do? I agree with my sister. We feel fine. I'm glad. Now go to sleep. Send Mother up. All right. Good night. Night. This is very silly. I agree with you. Well, you started it by hanging upside down on the jungle bars. You do. Not right after breakfast. It wasn't. It was, too. And that Tony Pickett drinks pop for breakfast. I'm going to tell his mother, too. That's me. I despise him anyway. So do I. And all that stuff about Anthony's foot. He just got itchy socks, that's all. <laughs> and funny toes. I like it, see. 
Well, if you like warts, I can't stop you. I think warts are very interesting. I like to spend them. I'm sleepy. Oh, my. Good night. Where's Mother? She forgot. Oh, she'll come up after dinner. I'll wake up for her. So will I. Good night. Good night. This is Bill Cole again. Maybe you're wondering how I know about all this. I'd have been much happier if I didn't. But as I told you, I had to see Jim. And being the soul of integrity that I am, I pursued him with the relentless intensity of a depressed bloodhound. I guess when I arrived in the country, Jim and Muriel must have been just finishing dinner. You can take the plates away now, Mark. Yes, sir. Well, looks as if I can't help having a few days off. <laughs> Spend the winter at Blanding's Quarantine Cabana. <laughs> I thought Margaret, my secretary at home, and she'll tell Mr. Guider and Mr. Bluff. Fortunately, I can work out the whole campaign here. She said the funeral was very nice. They were all glad to get out in the sun. You mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. The children said they feel fine. Oh, that's a relief. I'll go up in a few minutes and say good morning. Perhaps I should have given them much of that. What do you think? Hmm? What? Weren't you listening? Oh, no, I'm sorry, dear. You know, Muriel, I'm a little annoyed at Bill. That's not unusual, is it? No, but this is different. I asked him to go over the plastic rose that comes. The Chicago office is very irritated. He just wouldn't take the time. Can't you do it over the phone? No, he's got the papers. We've got to study them together. He was supposed to spend time with me in the office yesterday. Didn't show up. Looks as though you'll have to do it over the phone now that you're in quarantine. Well, it should have been settled yesterday. Do you want anything else? Oh, just coffee, not too strong. Tell Maud it tastes as though he boiled it in one of her shoes. <laughs> come to think of it, both of her shoes. <laughs> you're right. Through, Mrs. Blanding. Yes, Maud, just coffee. And make a week, Maud. Yes, sir. <clears throat> does Bill know that you want me out? I don't know. He probably does. Everybody was at the funeral except one girl at the switchboard. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> if that's Dr. Trim, when you talk to him, I'll go up and talk to the girls in. Okay. Oh, and find out why Miss Olive thought they had athlete's foot. That bothers me. Well, she was probably looking at her own tooth when she made the diagnosis. How <laughs> <laughs> long, dear? Well, only be a minute. Take your time. Uh, Mr. Blandy. Yeah. Mr. Cole is here. He's all dressed up. Looks very handsome. Maud, you didn't let him in. Yes, I did. But Maud. Yeah. Bill, get out of here. What's wrong with you? Well, don't come in here. Don't worry. I'm not going to stay. I'm giving you service. Look, I brought the papers with me. I haven't got much time. But Bill. We can run over them, straighten the whole thing out. Now, I told you. Look, look, Jim. I'm on my way to a very important dinner. Now, I've studied the papers thoroughly. Let's discuss the very few salient points, and then I'll be on my way. Now, there's plenty of time. Bill, this is a tough problem. I told you I've studied this. You have no problem at all. But you have, my friend. Take your time, Bill. Sit down. Relax. Uh, look, I'm in a hurry. I'll stand up if you don't mind. Now, listen, paragraph one. Plastic roses in District A interfering with Anna's flower shop on the same street. I don't see how that concerns Guider, Guider, Fleet, and Blot. Now, paragraph two. Bill! Which, my goodness, does a dinner coat shock everybody in this community? Bill, why are you stopping? What is wrong with you, Bill? Compose yourself. Sit down. He keeps telling everybody to sit down. Bill, keep quiet for a second if you can. Muriel, sit down. Sit down yourself. I don't want an explanation. I'm leaving. I'm late now. We'll settle the whole thing tomorrow. We'll settle it now. We will not. I'm late. You can't go, Bill. Why, Muriel, dear, I've got to go. You can't. You've got to stay. Muriel's right. Sit down. Bill. Take off your shoes. <laughs> Are you both out of your mind? Can't you see the way I'm dressed? Don't you know I'm going to a party? Oh, that's very pretty, Bill. But you can't go. Why can't I go? You tell him, Jim. No, you tell him, Muriel. No, you tell him. No, no, no. Let me guess. Let me guess. <laughs> let me guess. Close my eyes. No peeking. Yes. All right. Yes, I'm going. No, no. Stop hey, it. Hey, hey, hey. Quarantine. Let's go. What did you say? Quarantine. Joe Quarantine. Sent home from school this morning. Measles. No. Yes. <laughs> Oh, but you certainly do lend tone to the surroundings, Bill. You keep those clothes on. You see me out. I may not have the best lawyer in town, but I must say you're the best dressed one in the country. Now, what about paragraph two, Bill? Or shall we talk about that in the morning? understand why you put a call in on top of mine. I've been trying to get that call in all morning. I didn't know about yours. You know now. Cancel yours. But mine is important. So is mine. Now, which is the most important? New York or Washington, D.C.? <laughs> look, look. We'll put it this way. 
Is it more important to talk to Margaret Mudge at your office or to talk to the Department of Agriculture? Well, talking to Margaret Mudge in my office about my business happens to be very important. And don't try to impress me with the Department of Agriculture. Ah. Uh, I've got here first. Hello? Oh. Yeah. It's for you. Margaret? Hello? Hello? What? All right. Try again. Cancel it. Try every hour till you get it. Yes, thank you. I dislike you very much. Okay. Get your hands off that phone and don't talk to me. And don't talk to me. And don't talk on my phone. And don't talk to me. Where's Muriel? Upstairs with the children. And you... Fine. I'm very glad to hear that. Why can't we go downstairs? Because you have to be in a dark room. Now, you don't want your father and Uncle Bill to have to sit in the dark because of you, do you? No. But it's unfair. I told you why this misunderstanding took place. Why don't you believe me? Yeah. Because Dr. Trim said that you have the measles. And you're both hot. Well, so are you, Mother. Yeah, John. You are hot, Mother. Well, it's hot in this room. You see? You have the measles. We haven't got spots. We haven't got spots. If you haven't got spots, you get them. Now, children, please. Lie down and rest. Please be helpful. Mm, all right. We help you. But we don't agree with anything. Listen, children. I'll get ice cream. I'll get ice cream if you both take a nap until dinner. Oh, that's it. We will. Yes, we will. Well, thank you very much. I'm going downstairs. Don't mention it. Give my love to Daddy. Mine too. I will, and please stay in bed. We will. And we prefer strawberries. Nice. All right. Now be quiet. I've got to help Maud in the kitchen. Maud. Will you tell the grocery store to send some ice cream with the order? And one orange popsicle. Neither Mr. Cole or Mrs. Blanding will let me near the phone. Why not? Don't ask me, Mrs. Blanding. They just sit and glare at the phone and won't allow anyone near it. Hadn't you called the grocery at all? Yes. I wrestled the phone away from both of them around 3 o'clock, Mrs. Blanding. It's almost 6 now. And answer the door, Maud, and look out the window first and warn whoever it is about the quarantine. Yes, Mrs. Blanding. Who is it? Who is it? It's Dr. Cole. It's Dr. Cole. Oh, hello, Dr. Trim. Oh, good evening, good evening. Sorry I couldn't turn up last night. That's quite all right, Doctor. The patients are doing well. And so are we. My name is Cole. How do you do? How do you do? They should be. Should be, Dr. Uh, the patients should be doing well. Glad to hear that. Couldn't turn up last night, you know. Ran into a little fisticuff down at the fire station. No. Oh, it's bad and fine and fine. Bad. I should say so. Yes, indeed. I have to wait until the fight starts, you know, before I can set the nose. You don't say. Well, how fortunate that you happened to be there at the time. Live right next door. Very distressing. Such fine fellows, too. Like them all. What can we do for you, Doctor? They were mad dog, you know. Typical fireman's dog. Pet ball. What about a drink? Thank you, yes. A real killer. Good for fires. Uh, keeps other dogs away. I'll get you started. Good idea. Sure you won't change your mind, Doctor? I'll fires with all sorts of animals under foot. Wouldn't you like to see the children, Doctor? Oh. <laughs> Oh. Embarrassing. When children get angry, they get mean, you know, and I get embarrassed. So long since I was one, you know. But our children are very nice, really. They're a little upset, but measles aren't fun. No, they aren't. And I hate mumps, too. No one can say I'm not a hater of disease. I just hate it. Mumps. <laughs> the point is, I met you come by last night, ran into a little festival. Yes. Out of the firehouse. Pit bull, you know. A terrible. Suspender slapping. A hose fell right off the wall. And what was it doing? Extra one, one stored on the wall, you know. Anyway, and mind if I have a drink of water? I'll get one, Dr. Kim. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Anyway, I clean forgot. Hoses must have made me think of water. Funny but nothing last night reminded me of measles. Well, the children got along beautifully. I did. I meant to come by and apologize personally for the mistake. What mistake? Here's your water, Doctor. Oh, thank you kindly. I couldn't come by today. Too busy. It seems as if your charming daughters haven't got measles at all. Oh, what? Uh, seems as if Miss Olive, in her job, through no fault of mine, told Mrs. Spundle that she suspected measles. An athlete's foot. Mrs. Spundle called my nurse. My nurse called me. I told her to call back and tell Mrs. Spundle that from the symptoms she reported, measles might be the case. From then on, the whole thing swept right out of my hands. No. Next thing I hear when I arrive at the school is that the Blandings girls have gone home. The whole school in an uproar. Mrs. Spundle running up a white flag. What do I do? Parents calling teachers. Why, I tell you. What did you do? Went right over to Tommy Pickett's house, sir. He lives next door, you know. Rolled up my sleeve and took a look. I said to his mother, if this little boy has got the measles, then I'm a double boiler. His stomach upset, that's all. I gave him a soda mint tablet and a good slap in the back and cured the whole darn epidemic. 
Well, why didn't Mrs. Bundle call us and tell us? Oh, I didn't get to Tom's house until just before the fight in the firehouse. It was too late to call Mrs. Bundle then. Uh, she goes to bed with the chickens, you know. Called first thing this morning. She reported to me this afternoon that she tried to call you folks all day, but your line was being held clear for long-distance calls. I told her oh, I'd break the news. On second thought, I don't mind if I do. What? Have a drink. I'll take fry if you don't mind. <laughs> It's awful for you to have to go back to town at this hour, Bill. One more night in this dinner coat, and the only thing left for me is the kitchen of the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we got the contracts finished. Yes, in what might well be my very last legal transaction. With you, anyway. What about me? Oh, I shall be glad to continue to represent you, Muriel. Gladder than ever, in fact. Good night. And thanks for an absolutely harrowing experience. <laughs> Good night, Bill. Anyway, you didn't catch the measles. Well, of course, it really takes a few days to be sure. I had measles when I was four, six, and eight. What happened to the odd years? I recuperated from the even ones. <laughs> Good night. Want some milk? Oh, no, thanks. Let's go upstairs. I'm ready. <clears throat> well, well, quite a day. Interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, tiring, too. You know, I wish I did have a glass of milk. The mark's still up. Use my tin can telephone. Who, me? Sure. Just hit the kitchen window very gently with the rock. Well... There's a string hanging over the windowsill. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see now. What's that? Who knows? Hello. Hello, Maud. Hello, Nothing. Who broke my kitchen window? Well, listen to that, Muriel. I can hear it just as clear. Why not? <laughs> Why not, indeed? There's no kitchen window between you anymore. Who broke my window? Uh, Roger. Good night, Maud. 